also developing tonight more than 150 animals in deplorable conditions starving dogs overcrowded kennels filthy conditions this is phoenix police assisted by the arizona humane society some of the humane society said even though they've seen dozens of hoarding cases this was one of the worst ones i was present for the initial seizure on january 22nd we did our first initial walkthrough to just really understand how serious the situation was. The Arizona Humane Society and the field operations team does a lot of these type of large-scale intakes, and I have never participated in one where the medical condition of every single animal we were bringing out was so severe. Obviously emaciated, limping, non-weight-bearing, tick-infested, urine-soaked, um, white dogs were completely yellow on their legs and paws. So the first seizure was difficult just because of the shape of the animals. The second seizure held its own problems. Um, we had 162 animals come in. Granted, these animals were in better body condition score than the initial animals, but the teams that it took to get these animals into our facility to actually process them, ranging from behavior staff to field staff to veterinary technicians, trying to work with these animals, uh, getting them situated in kennels, making sure that they were comfortable and had food, to actually handling them, doing examinations, drawing blood, um, giving them tick treatment because they were covered in ticks. More than 165 animals we removed the second time around and I have to say that I think I can speak for our whole team that it was a big relief. That's the night we all slept well knowing that there was nobody left behind. So this little dog Shadow, little poodle, came completely matted. He had no idea where his body really was. You could feel his little bones underneath so we knew that he wasn't fed very well. Um, but it is truly amazing once you get these guys in and get him a clean shave and a shampoo and he looked like a completely different dog and just free-spirited once he got all that yucky stuff off of him. There's nothing more difficult than being there too late. And every time you donate and every time you give to this organization, you're helping us to get there on time. If you've ever wondered if a few dollars was gonna make a difference, if a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars was going to make a difference, I'm here to tell you that it will. It's saving lives. It's allowing us to manage a case of this scale, to be able to help this many animals all at once, to have an organization whose medical teams and animal care teams and behavior teams can save these lives. This is what your donations are doing. These faces, every single one of them is an individual, every single one of them has a story, and they deserve to be able to find a happily ever after. And that's what your money's going towards.